Hey my awesome people, Hamza here and welcome back to the channel. Now in this video, if you ever wanted a tool that will help you design, deploy, test and all that stuff in your development or design career or for your agency or for personal use, this is the video for you because I'm going to be introducing to you an awesome tool called InstaWP that actually enables you to instantly launch WordPress website without any hassle. Let's get started. I want to divide this video into two parts and the first part is going to be for designers and the second part will be for developers because this tool not only helps developers but also designers to launch WordPress website, share with clients, share with their teams and their users to test out and deploy projects before they actually go public. Please don't take InstaWP sort of like a web hosting company or website. No, 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 no. It's basically a space on the internet where you can launch WordPress websites within seconds share with your users with your teams and test out things and once you are comfortable with how everything is working out then you can finally push the changes or the files to your live server and this is good in a way that it gives you the possibility to test out things before you actually put them live so before we go into the nitty gritties of insta wp let's actually see what they are offering for example let's go down here in the features option they offer you instant sites i mean when i got access to this tool i couldn't stop it but to go into the website and check out what they mean by instant and in two minutes i could install wordpress and have access to that file in public but also the back end login so that i can check out and fix things or do whatever i want that's what they mean by instant sites and the beauty is that with every install of your WordPress website or test site on InstaWP, you get a domain name, an SSL certificate, and it's hosted. It's public. You can share a link with anyone on the internet and they can access this file and they can check out, they can test if they are users or they are teams, they can access these files in real time. And there is no server. Actually, there is a server because InstaWP is giving you access to the server or it's hosting your files but you don't need to invest in resources of having a server. And this is something I always wanted to have. I've been using some other local development tools, but unfortunately they don't give you the flexibility InstaWP does so. Next, they actually offer free SSLs for every install of WordPress or for every instance of WordPress that you launch on your account. On top of that, they also give you a free domain name. Of course, this is a generic domain name, but the beauty is that you can also assign custom domain names and point them to your WordPress applications in InstaWP. You can choose on the kind of versions of PHP and WordPress that you want to install and test in your test environment and as well as other tools that give you power as a web developer. You have access to a database editor, a code editor, error logs and all that stuff. So without any further ado, let's check out this tool in the back and how everything looks like and how you can get started. Okay, so I already have an account, but if you don't have one, you can just go to register and sign up for free for the start. But then later on, I'll take you through what you get in the pro and versus what you don't get if you have the free version. Okay, now I'll go and log in straight. And as I'm logging into the application, I want now to first mention that this section is for majorly designers, but also developers who need to know about what is happening for the designers option. I'm thinking like this because this is something you would consider or you would love to have that is not too complicated but you are actually having a lot of possibilities to launch wordpress instances or staging files on the cloud make changes or requested changes from your clients share a link with your clients or your team to test out things get feedback from them as you can see here i have a couple of installations these are all wordpress installations but let's start from the beginning for example over here what you have to do is say add a new and you have these options over here to choose a wordpress version i'll leave this at uh, 6.02 and then we have the php version we can choose whatever i want in this case i'll say 8.1 and then i can choose a configuration i am going to talk about this because i already have a configuration here but in a nutshell a configuration is a setup that you can always reuse when you are launching wordpress websites over here and that configuration you set up yourself and know what what kind of theme you always want to use then what kind of plugins do you always want to pre-install and once you select your configuration and launch the website that theme and the plugins will be automatically installed and then you simply log into your WordPress website 
and get going. All right, so I'll leave this one on the default because on the default one, you have the default theme from WordPress and no other plugins. And then here you can give your website a name, for example, hotel XYZ, and then you are good to go. Or you can generate names from here like auto generation property and then i can choose between having a temporary site or having a reserved site so in this case i can say a temporary site a reserved site is a site that can be sort of permanent in this account so now i'll select a temporary option and say create a website i'm leaving this to run in a real time so you see how fast it takes to actually launch a wordpress website so a couple of seconds 79 percent now good we now have a wordpress website we have a domain and here are our credentials we can auto log into wordpress and access our wordpress installation for example when i say auto login i am now taken into a new tab good now we are logged into our wordpress dashboard for example, if I go to appearance themes here, our themes, oh, apparently we are in 2022 as of making this video and we have the default 2022 WordPress theme installed. If we go to plugins, installed plugins, here are the default WordPress installed plugins, just like, you know, Akismet and then Holy Dolly. But maybe how does it look like for the users? Let me go to users. I see what kind of users were created by InstaWP. We have a generic name over here for the user and is the administrator and you can make changes to this the way you want. Anyway, now back into InstaWP dashboard, we now have this website. We have the login credentials and we have our instance or our WordPress install down below here. Now, in case you have made changes in the back end and all that stuff and you want your and you want your website users or teams to check out this as a designer or your client, just copy this link and share it to them in the private window and i just want to show you that this is a live site that you can share with anyone on the internet and they can get you feedback your clients your users your teams there we go a website launched in a few minutes so if you have been having tools that are probably you know nagging you and they're not giving you the power to actually be able to have for example live links to share with your clients where you can test things together instant wp is saying goodbye to those tools and giving you a warm welcome into having the power to have such abilities at literally no cost so on your wordpress launched install or on your WordPress staging site that you have over here uh, you will have 14 days uh, for it to expire and right now it's not showing the disk usage but let me try to reload this and we see how much space we are using currently yeah it's 68 mbs just a default install of wordpress and then here you can add tags i'll just name this f and b food and beverages and then i press enter now i've added a tag for that project and now we have these options over here this is to auto log into wordpress without having to copy the link then go to wordpress forward slash wp admin this just takes you straight to the back end of your website and here i can reserve this website so by reserving it means that i'll have it permanent in my insta wp account so it will not be auto deleted after the 15 days that are given to you and down below here we have this save template so if you want to reuse this or share it with your teams to use the same setup you can save it as a template over here and now we have more actions we can check into the php configurations view credentials so for example if you want to share this to other people to have access to the back end and then you can migrate this website so if i click on migrate you realize that actually insta wp integrated with blog vault and they have integration with a couple of hosting providers from bluehost godaddy uh, flywheel emotion hosting kinsta and you can just select your hosting provider and then have your websites move to your live server or your production server. Alternatively, you can use cPanel or FTP. I prefer going the cPanel route and you just click over here and then migrate those files to your cPanel or your production server. Back over here, migrating, we can export this to a local environment. We have other tools like the database editor, the view logs and the code editor. Let's look into the database editor and now here are the database, the tables, and you can even select any of these, for example, the links option. 
So here you can see how your database looks like and here you have the table for all the users. So anyway, now back here, let's look into the other option, the view logs. So for example, you can look into what, you know, errors are running around. For example, now we have these errors that are running around because of some issue I have no idea about. Please don't ask me. And then also the access logs, there are also these other files over here. So if you're a developer, this, is, this information is vital for you to know and have access to. So anyway, now I'm going to go back here. Under tools, we have one called a code editor. So as a developer, so most designers I know are not code junkies. But as a developer, you would want to have access to a code editor that would give you access to a lot of files from the WP admin files to the WP content files to the index.php and the links and all these other files from WordPress. So for example, I can navigate to WP content themes and here I can select the theme. This is 2022 and then I select the functions.php file, open it up. And now I have access to edit that file from here. Great. So back here, uh, we have now other options like, for example, the delete. So this means that we are going to be deleting this instance or the staging site in this case. And then we have the advanced options like the clone, like we can make a copy of this exact instance or staging site. You can have access to the FTP and SSH and also map a domain. For example, when I click on map a domain, I can add a custom domain of my preference and then point it to my testing site. I'm not pointing a domain name right now, but what I wanted to show you is, for example, if I say clone this site, I can generate a name or I can give it like hotel clone. In seconds, we have another instance, another staging site cloned from this other install which is down below here. And now we have a new one. Anyway, if I don't want both of them, now I can just simply select them here and then say delete website. So as a designer, this is something that I think you would be excited to check out or to have access to because we want to launch websites. We want to test out things. We want to get feedback from our clients there and then. And I want to mention that for every install or duplicate or clone, of the website, you receive an email from Inside WP of what is happening on your website. Let's go to the part of configurations because I realized this would not only be beneficial to designers but also developers. And you can make custom configurations, and every other time you're creating a website, you just based on those configurations. Like you just select the configuration, and you know by default, I'll have so and so plugin, I'll have so and so theme. Let's set up a configuration. So I'm going to say new configuration. I'm going to give it a name and this is basically a name to guide me around. And then I'm going to come over here, select, for example, the WordPress version 5.9 and then the PHP version. Let me say I want 8.0. And then here you can as well make custom configurations for your PHP, for example, the maximum upload file size and then also the post maximum size and all that stuff. Then here under the WordPress option, I am going to select the pre-installed plugins in this case. So we want Elementor. This is a slug for Elementor. How do you find out what slug is for what plugin or theme? I'm going to come over here to wordpress.org. We go to plugins. I'll look up for Elementor. So this is the Elementor page builder. And you realize the Elementor page builder slug is this, simply Elementor. So you just copy that come over here and then add that slug. I'm adding another slug over here because I want to have, because I want to have two plugins pre-installed. So the other plugin is going to be premium add-ons. So premium add-ons, open it up. And here is a slug for premium add-ons. So it's premium add-ons for Elementor. So I'll copy this, come to Insta WP, add that. Now I have two plugins. And then down below here, we're going to add a theme. So I know the slug for Cadence. So I'll just, you know, select that. Or you can add a URL for a plugin or theme down below here in this section. So in this case, what I'm going to do, but before I go any further, I want to mention that you can enable multi-site installation by simply checking this option. And then you can also enable auto update of the core. I mean, for WordPress, save for now. Now I have saved my configuration. Now let's go back into launching a new WordPress instance or a staging website or a test site, like you can call it. 
we are now going to go here to sites and we are going to say add a new site and I'm going to simply come over here to choose a configuration and now I'll be able to choose Cadence, Elementor and Premium add-ons. I can give the site a name, for example, I want it to be a permanent site and I create the site. So I leave this to run in real time, 79% now. Good, in about 10, 15 seconds, we have our website launched online. We have the live URL, an SSL certificate, and all the user credentials. But one thing you notice right now is that we have the site reserved. Use the auto login for now and look into our website what we have. Redirecting me into the WordPress admin. And now let's go and look into the appearance themes. We have, we should be having Cadence running. Yes, we have Cadence running here automatically. Let's go to plugins. We should have two plugins active, Elementor and the premium add-ons for Elementor. And here we go, Elementor and the premium add-ons for Elementor. Now you can start testing out your files as a designer or a developer, share with your clients, your teams, and get feedback there and then. Now that we are done with the designer section of the video, the other question is, what is it in for me as a developer? If I'm to use InstaWP, what benefits am I going to be getting? Let's get started. I'm going to come over here to my username and there is an option called apps. One is a Chrome extension that you can install on your Chrome browser and you have access to InstaWP and all that stuff. And then Slack, because with Slack, you're able to share your WordPress test site or staging site with your team so that they have access to all these and they are able to communicate and get feedback in real time. And so InstaWP is giving you this so much power by integrating these apps to ease your development journey. That now said, let's go and look into the other option. For example, the API tokens. So if you want third party accounts to authenticate with this application, InstaWP is giving you that power by giving you the options to create API tokens and get going. So you can simply just, for example, permission, create site and update site and then read. So I'll name this to be a starter TP. So here is my API token and I am good to go. And also the other option like to manage the APIs, you can come over here for permissions and you can edit those permissions later on in case you made any issue or error or whatever. Now let's go to the integrations. Under the integrations tab, we're able to integrate with other third party services. For in this case, it's MailChimp and you can uh, add a public key, add your MailChimp ID, and then you'll be able to integrate with MailChimp and be able to send out all these communications between your staging app, MailChimp, and then your users. Next is deployments. So under the deployment bit is I think one of the most exciting one for developers because you want to have the possibility to push changes to your GitHub account and those changes are reflected over there and you can even enter commands from within InstaWP and effect those changes from right within GitHub. So what you have to do is simply to add your Git repository so you can choose between two options. If your repository is public, then select the public repository. And then if it's private, then you'll simply just select the private repository, add your SSH link over here, add the branch of your repository, destination folder, enter your commands, and then push those changes. I've not used Git before, so but I have my developer friends. They are always talking about Git and all that stuff. But as a developer, I know what this means to you. If your repository is public, choose that option, enter the repo URL, choose the branch, enter the folder, enter your commands, push your files to Git. One more last possibility I've not talked about are templates. If you don't want your users to go into the hassle and bustle of creating their own installations on InstaWP, you can create public or shared templates. And with shared templates, it means that once you create that template, you can simply give out that link or share that link with your team. They just simply be able to install the same setup on their end. So in this case, if I want to create a shared template, I'll select the shared option and then I add and then for example, I can choose from here an existing site. So in this case, this is what I want to share. And then I can say the template name is Quema Travel. Uh, give it a description, template type. It's going to be shared obviously. So here I'll make it to be an instant template. Then I save the changes. So for example, if I say create a new site, site name here, I can create a site out of this template. So I can just say, 
I want it to be a temporary site and then give it a name, could be the name. So then here I say create a site. Voila, now I have created a site out of a template that I created. And this template is out of another site that I had created already on the website. So I'll go and visit the website. And you realize that this website is having KDAS installed because why? The initial file that you created a template out of was having KDAS Elementor and Premium Addons for Elementor. Now we created a template and we have used that template to create a new site out of that template. And the beauty about this is that if it's a shared template, then other people can use it. So for example, I can share this link with someone else on the internet and they're able to use this same link to create templates. So for example, I'll open up a private window and I'll paste that link for the shared template. So in this case, if I enter my email, I have already launched a website using a shared template that my friend has sent me. So what I'm going to do is I can just open this in a new tab. We have a new site created out of a template that a friend shared with me. So if you have your teams or you have your colleagues you are working with and you want them to use a certain setup of a test file or a WordPress installation that you have, you can create templates, make them shareable and then they'll be able to launch those instances or staging sites from their end by simply entering an email address and they're able to have these credentials and now have access to the back end of the website. I'll share with you an email screenshot from InstaWP of one of my users that has been able to use my shared template link and create a website, which is this instance that you're seeing right now. So the other factors before we go into the pricing, so under the statistics option, they give us the disk usage information, the sites that we have running, we have the templates. Let us now go and look into the plans in case you're looking into getting InstaWP for your teams or for you to use in your business. What are you paying for? Four plan, the free plan, personal plan and the pro plan and then finally the agency plan. In the free option, you have only five websites that can be active. Then you have 500 MB space, 40 hours, 48 hours for the site to expire, not actually seven days like I was saying. Three restores a month so you can restore a deleted website. It's a feature that I realized some users were asking for. If I deleted something by mistake, am I able to restore it? You can only make three restorations a month in the free account. And then uh, in the advanced options, you have 100 Git operations. Uh, you can only save one template and then you have five uh, template sites. That is for free. And then in the personal plan, we ha you have 10 websites. You can reserve sites. You will have 5 GB space, seven days sites to expire. I mean the temporary files and then 10 restores. Under the advanced options, you have 500 Git operations. You can add a custom domain like I've shown you. You can add, you'll have access to FTP, advanced configurations, and you are able also to clone sites. If we look into the pro version, you can have access to 25 websites. I mean that you can run on InstaWP. You can reserve sites. You have 10 GB space. You have tef, you have seven days uh, of site expiry, and then you can make 20 restores per month. One thing I really have to be very specific on is that for the reserved sites, it doesn't mean that you're going to be using this platform as a hosting platform because it's only for deploying, testing, or staging sites. Don't think about Inside WP as a hosting platform. That's why they are trying to limit how many sites you can have running. Advanced options, 2,500 Git operations, custom domain, FTP access, advanced configurations and all that stuff. But in the account where I was showing you all this demo, it was an agency account and you have 50 sites, you can reserve sites, you have 25 GB of space, you have 15 days for a site to expire and then you have 50 restores a month. Of course, thanks to having the agency plan and then uh, 5,000 Git operations, custom domain, access to FTP, advanced configurations as well, SSH access, clone sites, and then advanced deployments, able to uh, remove the branding, advanced templates, instant templates, and also export sites. Uh, create a team, and then you can assign team members. You can have five team members. I think I have not shown you the part of creating a team. Let's go back into the dashboard. Inside your Inside WP dashboard, you have this feature over here, and I can create a team. So if I say create a team, team name, so in this case, I can add a team member, I can add their email here. So I can say, 
uh, let me say Peter at you know their email. I can assign this person to be an admin or simply a member. So if I say this person an admin, I can add that person. And then uh, we have the other option to add another member because I can have like five members in my Insta WP account. So in this case, I can say another person. This one is going to be simply a member. So I simply also add them. And all these team members that I've added, they'll receive an invitation and then they'll be able to accept that invitation and now be part of my Insta WP account. In case you want to delete a team, you can delete the whole team using this option or you can cancel the invitation for each and every member that you added. So for example, I'll cancel this and now that means that they'll not be able to use. I hope now you have an idea on how you can get started using Insta WP. Personally, I think the part where a designer is able to create a site or import a site, make changes, share a live link to your client, let them, and then they suggest changes however they want, is really powerful. But also for developers, if you're working in a team, be able to share these links to Slack, and then be able also to perform Git operations right within InstaWP, I think that is really powerful. So anyway, if you have any questions or comments about Instant WP, please let me know down in the comment box below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. If you like it, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Have a good time and goodbye.